anxiety about the unknown. I could hear the steps walking up the stairs. For real, I was literally he hiding under the bed. eyes, there was no light in All of a sudden, eyes. this huge object with lights was on top of us, and it made no sound. The anguish. She's probably just worried about the life that she just left, about maybe the house. The fear. It wasn't like the house itself cracking, but the floorboards next to us cracking. Yes, this happened. So she goes down into the kitchen and she sees the four burners of the stove turned on. And you know, there was no one there. They were gas burners. The four of them were on. She darts over, she turns everything off and she leaves. Hi, today we meet Karen, who tells us about some of the disconcerting events that occurred during her childhood and teenage years in Mexico. When I was a little girl, and we lived in Mexico City, we lived in Colonia del Valle, and my parents bought an apartment, so my sister and I would grow up there, so it was me and my sister that's three and a half years older than me. And when we moved to that apartment, I was really young, I was about one year old, and I remember my childhood, it was very nice. I don't remember anything bad that happened in that apartment, that we were scared of or anything like that. We were always playing. It was a nice life. And it was an apartment with a lot of light. And as we grew up, my parents started having problems and all those things. But as the problems started getting bigger between my parents, we started feeling this heavy feeling in the apartment. It was heavy, heavy. Uh, my sister and I were scared. We were even scared during the day. We had a long hallway in the house where you would cross from the rooms to the kitchen. But in order to cross, you had to see, you know, that uh, passageway. And you could see the kitchen in the back. It was sort of like a cross that was the structure of the apartment. So then we started feeling more afraid and my mom would always feel something heavy. My dad would also feel it. Uh, but he has been more superstitious throughout his life and he has believed in uh, limpias or cleansings. And my mom didn't like those things. She would always prefer a priest to go and all those things that people usually do in these cases. My dad took a couple of people like three different people that I remember. And they were really strange experiences because we were little. And sometimes, you know, we would see what things they said, maybe praying a little bit, but also with incense. And they would paint crosses in the house. And for us, it was extremely strange. Karen's family was dealing with two main problems at the same time. The deterioration of her parents' relationship and the increasing feeling of dread in the apartment. She thought maybe the feeling could be a psychological reaction to the problems in the marriage, but still, her parents, who also felt this negativity, tried limpias and prayers until things started happening. So, um, yes, more people went to the apartment. Three people, four people that were doing cleansings at the house at different moments while we lived there. The energy felt heavier each time and things started happening. Like for example, uh, one day uh, we used to live in a fourth floor and sometimes they would knock three times on the window, like tuck, tuck, tuck. And the window didn't face the street. So there was, there was no way for anybody to knock on the window. And my mom would fall asleep again and she would hear it again, tuck, 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 like a couple of times, like three or four times. And my mom, you know, woke up, my dad, and she said, you know, they're, they're knocking at the window three times. And my dad said, oh, don't worry about it. Nothing's happening. Go back to sleep. Maybe it's a bird. Yeah, like, uh, like 2 a.m., 1 or 2 a.m., I don't know. So my mom said, no, they're knocking and they're knocking. So my dad finally wakes up and he sees nothing. He didn't see anything and the noise stopped. But these little things they heard on the window, they kept happening, like constantly. Also, one day my mom woke up to the kitchen one night in the middle of the night. So she goes down into the kitchen and she sees the four burners of the stove turned on. And you know, there was no one there. They were gas burners. The four of them were on. She darts over, she turns everything off and she leaves. And she was so scared. It was a really strong event. 
Karen and her family have been feeling harassed for quite some time now. Feelings, sounds, and physical manifestations that are getting bolder by the day. Other things happened. We would go to the movies. My sister and I were older. We were teenagers. We would go to the movies. We would come back into the house and someone would turn on the radio full blast as soon as we went into the apartment. There hadn't been a blackout or anything. You know, we always tried to find an explanation. Ah, uh, maybe something failed or the light went off and, you know, it came back and suddenly everything turned on. So sometimes we would open the door and it was like someone automatically would turn on the radio as we did that. And I remember my mother called a uh, priest uh, one or two times and nothing changed after that. I mean, things kept happening and it came to a point where everything in the house, everything that was happening, uh, started to be almost unbearable for the entire family. My parents started getting divorced and the sensation in the house was very uh, strong as time progressed uh, in a negative way. And everything was tense and I don't know what it was, but it, it got stronger. One time my parents were, were talking uh, while having a more like an argument. My sister was in her bedroom and I was about to go into the shower. I was like 14 years old, I believe. And so I go into the restroom. I got undressed. And you know those times where you start feeling like chills from head to toe? And the bathroom windows made a sound like they were breaking. A really loud sound. So I feel this chill. And this had never happened to me. I used to be afraid because we saw things and we heard things. Or we would see something pass really quickly and we didn't know what it was. But, uh, you know, nobody had ever spoken to me. So at that moment when the windows make that sound and I feel this chill in my whole body, like right next to my ear, someone says, Mama, Mama no hay tan so a ver bien. And it was the voice of an old lady. You know, a lady may be about 60, 70, I don't, I don't know, it was a lady. Right there and then, I was just paralyzed and shot. I don't remember anything else. My mom went into the bathroom and she covered me with a towel. The shower was on and she says I started screaming like a crazy person and I wouldn't shut up. It was a horrible sensation. She goes into the restroom, she covers me. And next thing I remember, I was sitting on the toilet and I don't remember what else happened. Yes, this happened. happened. Karen has just gone through one of the most terrifying experiences of her life. A disembodied voice of an old woman has spoken to her while she was getting ready to take a shower. We continue with Karen's story. I was so, so afraid that I was paralyzed. So that night, I never went back into the bathroom, which was my parents' bathroom. So I slept with my mom at 14. I slept with her. And, and even now, as I remember, I, I have that voice so freshly clear in my mind. So that was like the most intense thing that happened to us in that apartment. After a time, when I was 16, my parents had already finalized their divorce. My, my sister, my mom and I uh, moved. And we went to Coyoacan. This house has been a really nice house, but things have happened just little strange things, maybe like, like someone throws something, like someone throws something in the house, even with my little dogs. It's, it's, it's laughable, you know, we, we would hide their ball somewhere on top of some furniture, so she wouldn't reach it because if we were playing with her, she would scratch us. And on, on a lot of occasions, we found him playing with that ball. Like someone actually brought it from on top of the of the drawer or whatever and gave it to them because it was impossible for the ball to fall. So it's it's really in relation 
or in contrast to the apartment we used to live in where really, really strange things happen and really strong things. But even with these little things, we never ever felt even a slight, uh, even a little bit like we did in the apartment. I don't know if that continued with the new owners or not. I sometimes think that what happened in the apartment was actually sad because it was something or someone that wanted to be noticed. And that, however you see it, uh, talks about a need, someone in need. And we don't know what happened with the apartment. All we know is that very strong things always happened in that apartment. But we don't know that anybody died there or anything like that. The only thing we found out was that, the, I don't know if it was the family before us or the fa or two families before us that lived there. Um, they were a couple without kids, but they fought a lot. Um, as, as far as I know, between the, the man and the woman. And someone told us something that the man had a gun and he fired at the girl, but nobody died, fortunately. So I, I think that more than having a series of deaths or, or, you know, such negative things happening inside that might have you think that there are ghosts. I think it was more an energy, a, a bad energy that started accumulating in the apartment. And I do believe that with our story and the fights between my parents, more negative energy got accumulated in that apartment. I don't know. I mean, one might think that opens the door uh, to things that, that feed off that bad energy. We rented the apartment for uh, some time. And I think a Japanese gentleman uh, lives there. And my mom, uh, I believe, one day went to see if everything uh, was okay. And she said that the house felt uh, with a total different vibe, that there was no tension, there was, everything was light. So I don't know, maybe, uh, maybe these energies are stored and, and they are brought about uh, with conflict. And if there's no conflict, with only one person, nothing happens. But when there is conflict between two people or more, they, I don't know, they, they, they come out again or something like that. I really don't know. So like I said, I see it as a sad thing, as someone trying to gain attention for some reason. And I think what we need to do is try to find out what they need, try to uh, help them find their way. Karen's story raises several questions, like why no one felt anything initially in the apartment, and why the paranormal harassment increased with the interpersonal conflict. Furthermore, who was that old lady's voice that whispered in her ear, Mom, I can't see very well? Is it possible that an entire family hallucinated all these things under the stress of an impending divorce? Or could it be that a negative entity really decided to disturb the family and follow Karen and her mom and sister to a new home? We will never know. Karen's testimonial remains with us as proof of what could be paranormal events that transcended their dimension to meet us at ours. What do you think? on the next episode of Yes, This Happened. A group of friends are exploring an old warehouse in the 70s. We were talking about buried treasures, things like that. And this friend told me that he had another friend that had land or, or a property with a very old house which was being used as a warehouse for shoes because he was dedicated to the shoe business. And this place was full of shoe boxes, so sometimes, according to him, these boxes would just fall to the floor without any apparent uh, propulsion or any person that you could see that was maybe uh, throwing them on the floor, anything abnormal. One of them is testing his new portable tape recorder. And I remember that I had a portable tape recorder that I had just bought back then. It was 
probably the early 70s, mid 70s. One of those regular tape recorders about uh, 12 centimeters long by five or six uh, width. And it used cassettes, which was the brand new thing back then. So since the moment we entered the property, I turned on the tape recorder and I had a cassette. It was a one hour, a 60 minute cassette. And we got there to this room and I put my tape recorder on the floor. When they're suddenly faced with an unexpected situation. The light went out, everything turned off in general in the whole place. So logically it was past midnight and we got really scared. Truthfully, we were really scared. We just took off running. We got back to the door. We put the chain back with the lock. We got into our car and left the place immediately. The tape recorder is left behind. Right there, I remembered, oh my gosh, I forgot my tape recorder. Let's go back, guys. And everybody said, you're crazy, let's come back tomorrow. And I said, no, 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 I have to take it with me. So finally, the bravest of my friends said, I'll go with you, I'll go back, and we'll get the tape recorder. And what they hear in that recording will change their life forever. This tape recorder, which was already on the floor, you could hear everything was silent. And then suddenly, something got close to the tape recorder, like an animal. I, I heard like big sounds getting close to the tape recorder. On the next episode of Yes, This Happened.